What does it take to break a tree? What does it take to break a forest? So what happens is all these trees, like this massive one that we're in here, they're sucking water out of the ground and then they're expelling this water out of tiny little breathing holes in the undersides of the leaves. That's called transpiration. So all this water that's pumped out of the ground by these trees goes into the sky and is carried west, deeper into the Amazon. It then rains out again and delivers that water back down to the forest where the trees there pump it back out of the ground back into the sky and it's carried again to the west, deeper into the Amazon where it rains again. And in this way the rainfall kind of leapfrogs from east to west across the Amazon basin and sustains the whole forest as a whole. Now the eastern Amazon, where we are now, is the driest part of the Amazon and it's kind of the most critical part of this precipitation recycling system because if heat and drought break, this first water pump in that leapfrogging rain recycling system, then that breakage propagates to the west, deeper into the Amazon. So the measurements we're making here on these leaves are showing us, from these readings, they're showing us photosynthesis and transpiration, how the leaves are using water. And we're doing tests to see how they respond to different environmental conditions that we can control inside of these fancy devices here and there so that we can understand and even model in computer simulations their sensitivities. So what does it take to break the system? And if the forest here in the eastern Amazon, this nucleus of the rainfall recycling system breaks, will that propagate to the west? how much can the forest take? That's part of the focus of this work, and uh, we really want to jump into this Amazon tipping point phenomenon, as it's called, in our next work. Stay tuned.